You have two people with you, Faraz and Salim Karim, and both of them lost their father. 30 years on, I wonder how they're feeling. Let's get into it, uh, Jeremy, and just find out from the gentlemen like, what exactly is going through their minds and their hearts uh, at this hour. This, of course, was the scene of many people that passed on, but your dad passed on a couple of blocks away from here. Let's start with you, uh, sir. Tell us about what you know of what happened 30 years ago today. Well, 30 years ago, I was in my father's shop leaving. I just went out to buy a floppy disk. That time, computers became the in thing. And that was in Tutuich Street, so I left in 15 minutes. Uh, and when I got back, I found this whole place closed down, blood all over. Uh, but what really happened that day in that store was uh, David Wolf walked onto the street, walked in front of my father's store, saw a lady walking out, shot her first, shot another person, and a few more. Uh, and then my father approached him, tried to approach him and, and, and apprehend him in the sense that, uh, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you shooting these people, well, innocent people? And he shot at my father and the entry came from his right side, which could show that he tried to move. For his staff, they all were on the ground, the rest of the customers were on the ground. But I don't think he, uh, he would have been that type of person to be on the ground, you know what I'm saying? So these are kind of the things we remember of that day. You know, but uh, but subsequently, your your dad did pass on, not necessarily on the day, but days um, following that. A, a week later, in hospital, uh, when he was going to go for his first physio. So uh, on that day, he was supposed to be going for his first physio, and that night he had a, a blood clot, as they say, uh, to his heart, and he passed on, and that was as we had to accept it in in that time and understand that was what really happened. I asked you earlier on about, uh, you know, four years that he spent behind bars and he was released. How did the Karim family take this? Look, it's a, it was a bitter pill to take. It was a bitter. It was actually um, we were uh, we were very upset. We actually looked at avenues of where, how to stop him from getting released. And uh, at that time, the ANC approached my mum, and they said to my mum, you know what? We understand the pain you're going through. But at the end of the day, there's some good going to come out of this because we've got an opportunity to barter with the South African apartheid government to say that, you know what, uh, you're going to release Baron Stadium, we're going to release McBride. And ultimately, Mandela was, uh, Nelson Mandela was also released because, because of his actions brought pressure on from the rest of the world to understand that how we're being oppressed in this country. And it's purely because of, I feel, it is these eight people that actually should be heroes. They're the unsung heroes of South African transformation uh, and it's actually very nice that um, after 30 years it's being honored but it is because them the I feel and the, the pain is there but they were instrumental in the breaking down of the apartheid wall in this country and by by the government of now 30 years later honoring it or what's his name again uh, Bradley, Bradley. Uh, reviving this brought back a lot of wounds in our heart but you know what but we understood why now 30 years later thinking of it uh, 30 years where the wounds have actually like healed and we realized that we made as a family as a mother who was so bright made good decisions for this for the South African people so she inadvertently is also uh, uh, a hero in my eyes for making a decision of saying you know what let's not Let's let allow the process so the transformation of the ANC government can come in there. Because both my mom and my dad were both very politically inclined as well, mm -hmm. and they understood their kind of life. You can you so you can you can you can safely say that your father's death was not in vain. No, no definitely not. Definitely, if anybody can believe, if you understand it and look at from our point of view, from our eyes, and to see who got released. And Nelson Mandela got released, the greatest man ever that lived on this planet got released purely because of that, uh, of the pressure of the rest of the world. So I proudfully, I would say my father made history books. It's a sad part is it has only been honored after 30 years. That's all we actually can say to the ANC government. You know what? Certain unsung heroes have to be recognized, and this is one of them. These eight people are one of them as well. It's Thank you so much for sharing that. You, you mentioned something? It's not about social justice and injustice right now. 
It's about social responsibility. We have to attend to poor people. We need to look at these people's lives. In 30 years, has the government made their lives better? Have we educated their children? Have we participated in the Ubuntu of social development in every area, in every community? So, yes, uh, sometimes uh, to, to, to go through a process of pain, like they say, without pain there's no gain. So we'll accept the gain better than the pain. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing this uh, very personal story with us and our viewers. Thank you so much. Uh, there you go, Jeremy, just uh, hearing those words uh, where there's no pain and there's no gain and the Karim brothers have really come to terms with what happened to their dad who really paid the ultimate price but I think it's worth noting and understanding what Judge um, Louis Haram who sentenced the Vedvolf uh, to, um, to death said in his judgment saying that the chances of rehabilitating him were very slim saying that if he was given a chance he would do it again we do know that uh, the Vedvolf is living just outside Pretoria um, he is married and does have children um, but uh, we also know that it's families like this that have uh, come out here who are going to be paying homage to the men and women that lost their lives in this very square and also the blocks around this Lilyangoni square. Over to you, Jeremy. Very somber day in Pretoria today. Lorenzo Temba, thank you very much.